All right, I am back taking a look at this um, QQQ short-sided trade using put options. This is the Tastyworks platform where I do all my options analysis. Um, here you have the uh, strike prices. Um, again, the flag is where the uh, price is when I entered, which is just under 220. Um, I can add info here and give you more information on it. So yeah, just under 220 is where this trade was put in place. Um, you've got a range uh, in the recent past from when the coronavirus pandemic started was about 137, and the lows of Mar the end of March war was um, I believe 165. So here, so this area is where we should expect price to be. Um, usually that's kind of how these big moves work. Uh, and so what we're looking at is how can I take advantage of a move down here, um, but also not lose too much if price comes back up here. So this here is my max loss on the setup. Um, I've currently got it showing five contracts of the July 17 two, uh, 210 strike puts. So that is saying that um, I believe the price will will be under 210 um, from the current 220 um, before the date of July 17, 2020, um, and that were I wrong on that date, if I were to hold them uh, and it was the price was 2010.01 or higher, I would lose the cost of the contract because they were expire worthless and that cost would be $4,000. Um, so up here, you can take a look and see that uh, with a theoretical um, uh, expiration, I'm sorry, a theoretical situation where uh, the day before expiration, um, if price dropped from 220, the current to 200, um, and I would exit the uh, the put options, I would make three hundred and eleven dollars. So all in all, giving me a liquidity of around around five thousand. So all in all, it would uh, it would basically break even, get or give or take, since I paid four thousand for it and get four thousand or so exiting. So again, this is what I was showing on the previous video, where even though uh, you'd get that 8%, 8.5% drop by expiration. Um, with these, with this setup, I would not make very much money with that situation happening. I would be able to get out with the money I uh, risked, but I would not make more. So that's important to understand. Um, now, let's take a look and see what happens if that same uh, let's say just to round, use round numbers, 10% drop happened on July 1st. On July 1st, we're looking at a $1,400 profit above the $4,000 investment were I to sell those puts on July 1st um, at, if QQQ dropped to $200 from $220. Um, you can also see it like this. Uh, so again, the profit or loss theoretical THEO, the orangish peach number, is the uh, the profit on the date I set here, whereas the PL EXP is the profit or loss. In this case, it's green, so it's profit at date of expiration, which is July 17th. So again, uh, in this case, at 200, um, I'm you know I would make about a thousand dollars or if if I held it and sold it on that day but if I if it if the drop occurred early and I sold it on June July 1st I would make twice as much so that just goes to show how options pay uh, well when things happen more quickly you will get paid more um, it also takes away money faster uh, the higher it goes. So for instance, if this 220 uh, price bounced up to 224 or 225, you can see that um, on expiration, PL EXP, 
it is a red 4,000, meaning that my puts would be worthless on July 17th. That $4,000 would be gone um, on June 1st, were I to wait, I'm sorry, July 1st here, my theoretical um, uh, sell date at that same price of, let's say, uh, yeah, 230, 235 or whatever, um, they are still not worth very much up there. You can see that I lose $3,700. I'm not comfortable with that. So instead, I need to put a stop loss somewhere lower. So for instance, what I had come up with was June 5th, one month from today, um, were I to, where was it to drop to, uh, let's see, I think, I believe I said about 225. That, again, that's rounding. Um, so it's saying there's a 44% chance, 45% chance of that happening given previous volatility, um, and that my loss in that situation would not be as extreme um, as it would be uh, were I to hold it till the end. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's still more than I thought it would be, though. So that I, I'll, oh, I see why it's July set fifth, not June. Um, June fifth. There we go. So my loss at 225 goes down to approximately half of the cost of the contract. So that that was the thinking when I put that stop loss in place. I mentioned in the other video. It seems like it's very close, but it's far enough away that if price would break beyond that point in just a matter of weeks, I can be relatively confident that the retracement coming may not happen until later in the summer or perhaps just before the election. Um, if this drop is going to happen soon, uh, it should be occurring. It should not be any higher than it is now, certainly not 2% um, on June 5th or before. So if this occurred, let's say tomorrow, um, you know, May 7th, we got some good news, um, you know, it gaps up, something great happened. You can see that uh, in this case, I actually get out of my uh, puts if I held that stop loss. The P&L theoretical is a loss, but it's only a loss of 460. So just a little over like 11, 12% loss, which for options is not bad at all, um, you know, and, and you'll understand why that is when we start looking at the other side of what this would make were I right. But again, um, this is just to show that, you know, if price goes, if the QQQ price goes up very quickly, I can get out of this trade relatively unscathed. Um, if it goes wrong within the next month, um, on July, or sorry, June 5th, uh, we'd be looking at a loss of about 50% of the contract, a little bit less than that, which I'm totally comfortable with. Um, I would not want to be holding uh, into July. Let's put July 1st back again. Were I holding and price even just stayed right where it was today at 220 um, or so, just to show you how this works, um, at 220, we're looking already uh, at a, you know more than half of my uh the cost being gone so you know if if i hold beyond june 5th price needs to stay down here otherwise i'm going to have to release these just to manage risk so even though the uh, expiration date says july 17th um, that does not mean that the intention is to hold these put options until then however if it drops quickly, I may hold some of the contracts. The reason is, is because, as you can see, if, if we change this from a uh, uh, you know a high number to something below the strike, and again the strike price is 210 here. So if now I bring this down to the strike price, um, and you know start messing with this date, let's say that you know one month from today. The, uh, the strike price gives me a profit of, uh, you know, 900, is that right? 900 bucks, basically. Um, again, an expiration, it would be a, a total loss because it would be at or above my, my uh, strike price. But were I to sell the options early at my theoretical date of June 5th in one month, I would profit, I would take home an additional $914. Um, just for taking this trade. And again, all I really have at risk is about 
two grand because of my stop loss. So you can do your uh, you know, profit to risk analysis there and decide whether or not that's worth it, uh, considering if I thought that the, you know, the likelihood that we drop to, uh, uh, to 210 is very good. Um, 210 is not a very good, very, very big drop though. What I actually expect is something more like 200 within a month. So if that were to happen, um, we're looking at a profit of $3,600. Again, it's P&L of Theo, the uh, peach number there, the peach, uh, yeah, the, the number next to the, the peach P&L Theo. So that's almost doubling my money uh, uh, in a month. Again, not necessarily my money. It's, it's my max loss, right? The amount invested and the max loss would be doubled in profit of nearly. Uh, were we to drop, I believe I said it was about 10%, uh, in a month. So now if it took an additional month to happen, if we go sideways and it wasn't until July 5th that we suddenly had a drop, the, those five contracts would only be worth $1,700. But you can see that, um, or sorry, 17, I would only profit 17. So it would actually be worth 5,793. Um, here is the, how, how much I would get when I liquidate. Um, this would be my profit beyond the cost of the option. So I would get the $4,000 back plus the $1,100. Um, again, considering that I can only really lose uh, two to $4,000, even if I went to sleep for a month uh, and just let the trade go, um, you know, that's not, that's not bad for, in my opinion. Now let's say that things went a little better and uh, we got all the way, better for me anyway, and we got all the way down to, let's do like one, I think we said like 185, let's say. I think I might have said 180, but let's just say 185. Um, if 185 hit uh, just the day before expiration, we are talking, again, we're looking at the Peach P and Theo. The green number means it's a profit. We're profiting 8,494. Um, 8,500 if you held it to expiration. So with a max loss again if i went if i put this trade in i went on vacation and forgot all about it the most i could lose was four thousand whereas were the market to drop from today i mean we'd have to see let's see what drop would that be it would be from today uh i think it's like 15 16 percent uh just doing some quick math so getting 15% drop, we'd be looking at an $8,500 profit above and beyond getting that $4,000 back. So it's a 12, my, you know, if that was the only, this was my entire account, if you want to think about it this way, if that was my entire account, my account would grow from 4,000 to 12,000. I don't personally recommend taking trades with, uh, with my full, uh, full account. That's not a great strategy. Eventually you'll go broke if you do that. But just for demonstration purposes of seeing how quickly these options can actually gain money, um, you know, we're talking uh, two months and it's not just, you know, not just doubling, but tripling. So that's kind of neat. Um, if it happened earlier, let's say it happened at the end of June. Uh, if you got down there, again, you're already looking at an $8,000 did I do that right? Eight thousand, seven or eight thousand, let's say. Uh, yeah, seven or eight thousand dollar gain. Whereas if I change it to June fifth, um, yeah, you're still looking at nine thousand dollar gains. So, you know, the faster this happens, if it does happen, the faster it happens, the better it'll be. If this occurred, this is where you know you can see the curve here. Um, if this were to, were to occur tomorrow, um, it, you can see that the, the, the difference is just a thousand, it's, it's about 10,000 rather than 9,000. So there is a curve here and at certain points they start to become exponential, but that's where choosing your strike really matters. You want to give yourself enough time, but you also want to, uh, get that multiplying effect when you're right on time. So um, if we somehow drop 15% overnight, that $4,000 would be worth you know, $14,000. So it's almost a $10,000 gain. Um, whereas, like I said, if I put on the trade and did nothing um, and forgot all about it, it would at max cost me four grand. But with my stop loss, it actually only cost me two. So um, yeah, 
10 grand, eight to 10 grand potential, you know, profit for 2% potential loss uh, is a is a reasonable, reasonably good risk reward. <laughs> for me, uh, it works. Um, and just just for fun, if we were to return to the uh, lows, let's just take a look at that. Um, if we went all the way down back to 165 and then, you know, we're saying the probability of that happening tomorrow is about 3%. <laughs> um, but the probability of it, ha of it happening within the next month, uh, that can't be right. Well, maybe it is. Uh, they're saying it's 3% still. So, you know, likelihood low, but we're talking at $18,000 profit. So $22,000 from that $4,000, you know, quote unquote investment. Um, if it happened on expiration, you know, just you know, stay in here all for a month and a half. And then suddenly on the 15th, it, it, it drops, you know, 30% or something, you know, we're still looking at yeah, 18, 18, five. Um, so that's pretty much my max profit in my opinion. Could it technically go lower? Yes. Um, but I would expect something more around this area of a 200% to 400% gain. Um, and again, a 50% or so, uh, risk, um, if you're curious, uh, if you want to see how the strike price changes things. Let's, or sorry, not the strike price, the expiration. Let's say you felt confident that this was going to happen before November, but you weren't so sure it was going to happen before July. How much would it cost you, right? So you can go to December 18th, which would go beyond the, um, beyond the uh, election and keep your strike price at 210. And you can see that the price of the options goes up from eight dollars or eight fifty to eighteen fifty. So again, you have to multiply that by ten um, to uh, to figure out how much it would cost you. And then again, I had five um, five contracts, so it comes out to more like ten grand, uh, I believe. But yeah, that it, we're, we'd be talking a lot, way more money that I'm that I'm willing to risk, but. Um, you know, a possible profit of, you know, way, way up there, depending on when it happens. Um, if it doesn't, let's say you are betting now that you know it's going to fall before November 30th, but you're not sure when, and you think it's going to fall to, to the March lows, um, you know, you, you would, would be risking nine to $10,000 and your chances of making, uh, if, if you were right, you would then profit about 12,000. So it's, as you buy more time, this becomes much tighter. Uh, you really have to be right. See, the problem is, is that uh, if you waited that long and it turned out that you were wrong and it suddenly went up to 225, um, you know, you would lose your entire uh, max loss. Here it is. Uh, you'd lose nine nine thousand two hundred. So, you know, it, but you can buy time. But again, if you if you look one more time at the difference in what you're paid, in my opinion, it's just not worth it. Because at at one sixty five, here you're looking at theoretically thirteen grand profit, but with less time. Whoops, too many. Assuming again, it would be it would be. If it doesn't happen before your time, you won't make anything. But if you're right and it's and you think it's going to happen in a month, you know, you still you actually get paid more with uh, with. Yeah, if it happened before June 5th, you get paid quite a bit more with this contract that I'm purchasing for less money. Oh, I see what happened. The price went up overnight. So it's it now costs more than what I purchased it for. That's why the prices have gone up. Um, so yeah, the, uh, you know, if you got in now overnight, uh, you'd be looking at a $17,500 max gain to the lows of March, um, with this July 17th contract, which again, compared to the December 18th contract, that gain was only 13,000. So, um, it does make a difference in my opinion. Uh, you know, you have to be right about the direction or at least know where to cover and uh, you know manage risk appropriately, but you also have to be right when 
uh, it's going to happen when you're using options. So uh, good luck again. Let's uh, I'll keep an eye on this and uh, might do an update uh, with the chart of how this is going in the near future. Thanks for checking it out.